to start here. This is uh, kind of a deja vu moment, I suppose, mm -hmm. uh, with these, uh, these proposals to try to restrict voting in the state of Michigan. But I want to start by reminding people of the incredible step we took forward in 2018 18. at the mm -hmm. at the ballot box when we decided that we were going to really open up uh, the ways that people can vote, the access that people have uh, to the ballot. That was major, major news here in Michigan. And we saw it pay off in 2020 when yeah. so many more people voted uh, in, in ways that they wouldn't have been able to before. That's exactly right. And we did it by a large majority in 2018. Like these are numbers that frankly a candidate would dream of, right? The, the, the victory that happened in 2018. And the fact that the Republicans, you know, what they saw is that in, in 2018, we did this change in 2020. We as Democrats did a terrific job using these new rules. And frankly, because of COVID needing to use them to allow more people to vote absentee and more people to access the ballot in, in the ways that had been changed in 2018, Republicans lost. So their, their response to this is to try to roll back what the people of Michigan decided they wanted to do in 2018 back even further than, worse than it was before 2018 in order to try to win victories in 2024 and going forward, right? This is all about the big lie. This is all about, they think that we cheated by using the law and following the law very carefully. They think that um, they can continue this idea that there was something wrong with those 2020 elections by suggesting to people that they have to secure the vote by passing this ballot initiative. It's none of it's true. It's all, it's all lies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we should be clear, not a single instance of voter fraud or phantom voters or any of these things that you hear people talking about has been uh, not only not proven, I mean, there hasn't even been any evidence put forward that would suggest any of that happened. No, good, clean elections up and down the ticket run by terrific nonpartisan um, election officials um, who are good at their jobs, professionals who did their work and did it well. Um, and the Republican Republicans who are not um, <laughs> buyers into this idea of the big lie also agree that this was a good election. And they've tried everything. The other side has tried everything to try to point to something. And it's all made up. It's all, you know, people who don't understand the process, who think they saw something, you know, uh, people delivering food to, to the TCF Center in Detroit. They assume there were ballots in the food bags. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous, the lies that they will hang on to to try to prove that there was something wrong with that election when there was not. Yeah. So let's talk a little about the specifics of this yeah. uh, particular ballot initiative. What would it do? What would it require that we don't know? Right. So the so the the big changes are around absentee voting, right? What they what they want to do is require that you prove your identity every time you vote absentee, despite the fact that you've already proven your identity when you registered to vote and when your clerk decided to send you a ballot. Um, so they want you to have to include. Whew, this scares me in terms of the, the world of security, right? The last four digits of your social security number. Um, no, nobody wants to write that on a piece of paper and drop it in the mail. I, I, I struggle to understand why they think this is a, a good idea in terms of voting, but they wanna do that. They also wanna restrict clerk's ability to send you your absentee ballot, right? They wanna make that harder for the clerks to do. And they wanna make sure that the clerks can't get funding and support from other sources. The same time that the Republican legislature is not fully funding clerks to make sure they have the funds they need to do their jobs, they wanna stop the clerks from finding other sources of nonprofit funding to help them do their jobs. Um, all of this designed to try to block access to the ballot, slow down the process, make it more difficult and make voters believe that there is something wrong with a very safe, very secure process. And we should also spend a little time trying to explain how this works. This is a quirk in uh, the uh, government of Michigan, the, the, the ballot and electoral process that allows a very small minority of the overall population to try to end run uh, electoral outcomes. Talk just quickly about how that works. So Steve, this is one I struggle to explain to folks who haven't, haven't seen it happen before because it does frankly sound a tiny bit absurd. But with uh, just 340,000 signatures, um, they can bring this language to the legislature, which is run by Republicans, and the legislator, legislature can vote for it and bypass any opportunity for the governor to veto it, bypass any opportunity for the rest of the electorate to vote yay or nay on it, 
but just make it law. Um, this sits in, in Michigan's constitution. It's a process that's been there. It's been used before, but this is, I think the first time I've, I've seen someone attempt to use it to, to directly and straight up overturn what the people of Michigan said they wanted just a few years ago. It's, it's an abuse that um, is, is really, uh, it's, it's even hard to put words to how, how egregious this abuse is. Um, and we've, we've got to do everything we can to slow it down and stop it. And when you say slow it down and stop it, yeah. what does that mean? What does that mean for you as the party, yeah. the Democratic Party? But what does that mean for individuals? Right. So for us and for individuals, what we're saying to everybody is we, we have to decline to sign. When you're going to see these folks out, they're going to have this petition in their hand. They're going to claim it makes it easier to vote. They're going to claim it secures your vote. Um, they are lying to you when you make those claims. And we need to make sure our friends, our family, our neighbors all know that these are lies and to not sign this petition. We're going to ask people to let us know where they see petition gatherers um, so that we can send our volunteers there to help educate the voters who are being asked to sign this petition about what it is they're actually signing and encourage them not to sign. This is going to be an aggressive campaign. Um, but again, that number is so low, um, it's hard to imagine that we can stop them, but perhaps we can slow them down, maybe discourage some of the, the petition gatherers who don't actually know what they're gathering petitions to do um, from doing that work and, and perhaps stop them. And then you know, assuming they get these signatures, we, we have a team of lawyers already in place working hard on figuring out what our strategy is in terms of a legal strategy for um, whether or not this is a, a constitutional change that we can um, push back on in the courts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we should also talk a little about how this fits in the national context. Oh gosh. Uh, it, Republicans yeah. in lots of states are up to this kind of uh, initiative to try to roll back the gains that uh, that that people who want people to be able to vote made in many states. Uh, but there's a debate in Washington right now about legislation that would, at least from a national perspective, make some of these things harder to do and would protect some of the ballot access that we have here in Michigan. Yeah, that's absolutely right. This is definitely part of a a, a national effort on, on the Republican side to, to subvert the will of the people, to change the way people access the ballot, to block people from having access to the ballot. I know folks have heard the stories about the laws that they'll say you can't give somebody a drink of water when they're standing in line to vote. This sort of thing is happening all over the country. And this here in Michigan is just a piece of that. There is legislation um, in Congress right now that's being d debated, worked on, that would fix a lot of this. Would not fix all of it for us here in Michigan, but would fix a lot of it. And we, we need to push hard and help support our Democrats who are trying to make that happen in Washington, D.C., with as much support as we can give them. These changes are important to us to securing democracy, frankly, um, because as we know, part of, part of what it means to be an American is to be able to have access to this ballot and to participate and to vote. And when these folks make it harder and harder for folks to participate, it is frankly just un-American and un-small-d democratic. Yeah. Uh, and there's also no question that um, these kind of measures affect certain communities Absolutely. more than others. And those communities happen to look different than mm -hmm. uh, much of the population in Detroit, African-Americans, uh, Latinos, uh, Arab Americans, folks from the Middle East. Um, when these kinds of measures are put in place, it really means that fewer of us vote because fewer of us feel like we can do that safely. We feel discouraged from the very idea of participating. That is exactly right. And that's exactly their goal, right? Um, man, many of us, you, know, you and I will still vote, but many folks who will hear these stories, and I'm gonna tell you this, we're hearing from clerks, people are already hearing this story and are already worried about their access to the ballot and whether or not they have to follow these rules now before it's even happened. Mm -hmm. So we know that this causes confusion and the whole point of them doing this is to make sure that more black and brown people don't vote because when black and brown people vote, when we vote, Stephen, good people who are, happen to be Democrats get elected, bad people who happen to be Republicans do not. That's just the fact of the matter. Um, so their goal here is to stop as many folks who look like us from voting as they can. Yeah. Uh, before we before we end, I want to go back just briefly to something you said earlier about if this uh, does get 340,000 signatures and somehow passes the legislature, which seems like it might be pretty easy, 
there still is a legal process that would have to unfold. And the question will be whether this is a constitutional change uh, that requires more than just this process, which I, I think is important because we changed the constitution in this right. state as a state. All of us went to the polls and decided to change the constitution to allow these measures. Uh, there is a fundamental fairness question really about whether you can undo that uh, through uh, this, this process that essentially nullifies what, what is already in the constitution. That's exactly right. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but we, we have some terrific ones who are, are part of the team here who are looking at each and every piece of this and ways that we can um, come at it from the legal standpoint. You know, they started, frankly, at the, the, the Board of Commissioners and, and I think did a great job of getting them to change that 100 word um, summary to actually describe what is in this petition. Um, and I think that there are just steps all along the way that we can take and we will continue to take until we have exhausted every option on the legal side um, to make sure that we're protecting people's access to the ballot.